Good afternoon. Welcome to the Remnant. Uh, we're here today with uh, hope in our hearts and faith that uh, God is going to perform everything that He's promised you in your life. You know, our God, He's a good God. Amen. He supplies everything you need. Everything. You know, I heard it this way years ago that where there's a vision, God will provide every provision. provision. Everything you're going to need in your life for your journey, God will provide it. God will provide if you're young, uh, in high school, and, you know, God eventually will provide you a wife. All right. And then God usually provides the children because... Amen. That's family, and God loves family. And, you know, I'm here to tell you that there is hope that because all of us have a level of faith. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Bible talks about faith, seems like all the time. You know, I can't do it the way I love God and serve God without faith. Mm. It takes faith for everything. Mm. This morning when you woke up, I'm sure you had faith that there would be food to eat for breakfast or lunch or even dinner because we serve a God that honors us as we serve him and love him in our faith. So Pastor Daniel, what do you think about faith? Well, faith. You know, there's no such thing as a person who has no faith. A lot of times you get certain people, they may be, you try to talk to them about the Lord and they're just like, you know what, I'm not a faith type of person. Well, faith is hope being in those things not yet seen. Faith is hope. And that's what we have. That's what we've been given. And the Bible tells us that we've all been given a portion of faith. We have all been given the ability to have faith and believe. So the issue here isn't whether or not you have faith. The issue is where's the virtue of your faith? Where do you put your faith into? Maybe you put it into yourself. Maybe you put your faith into your money to carry you on. Maybe you put your faith into your strength to carry you forward. Maybe you put your faith into your job or other people. But the truth of the matter is that Everything's going to fail us in this world. But if we put our faith in Jesus, if we trust him, he will never fail us, but he will see us through every single time. Amen. Amen. God is good. He knows what to provide. Amen. Even when we at times feel like we have no faith, God shows up in our life and we think, wow, I do have faith. But I want to pray. Hmm. Because I want to read some scriptures to you. Because I believe in the word of God. I believe that I need to read this word. Because it, it helps me activate my faith. That's right. See the Bible say, says this. Faith comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. And hearing mm -hmm. the word of God. So let me pray. Because I believe this is a timely message for you. Mm. That you're in a situation that you're going to need faith for God to bring the mm. answer to make it happen. That's right. Our God is about making things happen. He's not asleep. He doesn't slumber. But he's always, always watching us. He's not like us. We get tired. We have to take naps or sleep. Our God never sleeps or slumbers. He's never tired. He only rested when he created the heavens and, and earth and his love for us mm. to teach us that we don't overwork and kill ourselves because God's a loving God. So Amen. let me pray. Father, I thank mm. you for today. Yes, Jesus. Yes. And Lord, I thank you that everything we do, it requires faith. That's so true. I pray and I release faith to those mm. who are watching this yes. program today yes lord yes that yes. your faith will arise that god because he is the answer that god mm. knows how to enlarge yes. your faith that's right to receive what he has for you you might feel like there's no answer but he is the answer mm. 
You might feel like there's no way, but God makes a way mm -hmm. where there seems to be no way. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for each one today. And I hear the Lord says, just be expecting in your heart. Mm -hmm. Expect God to move on the behalf of your faith. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, I, I thank you for today in Jesus' name. Now, I want mm -hmm. you to turn to James chapter 4. Five, and it talks about faith but it's in five let's start from 13 through 18 I just want to read because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God so as I'm reading and as we're uh, delivering you this message let faith arise in your heart. Amen. Is anyone among you suffering? Hmm. Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. If anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven aren't you thankful God hmm. wants to forgive you of your sins That's right. all you have to do is confess it hmm. God loves that when you confess Amen. verse 16 confess your trespasses to one another pray for one another that you may be healed the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man, as it avails much. Elijah, the Old Testament prophet Elijah, says he was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. That's a long time. We think we're in a drought in California, but God had him pray that it would not rain. Now I think we need to start praying for the mm. rain to come. Maybe you need to start praying for rain in your land too. Like Elijah said he was like us. A nature like us. Mm. Verse uh, 18. And he prayed again and the heavens gave rain. And the earth produced its fruits. Wow. Amen. That's amazing. The earth produced its fruit because it rained the water. Now, to me, that's an analogy or an example of our faith. Without faith, what is the word says? It's impossible to please, please God. God. Amen. But with faith, it will produce. That's right. It will produce whatever you need. Faith. It produces too, just like uh, when he prayed, it, it, it brought, brought the water and it produced fruit. There, there's a, a principle there that God wants us to know. Never stop praying. Never stop believing. You got to have faith. And I know sometimes we're in circumstances or situations where we think, God, where are you, God? Are the heavens closed? Maybe God is saying, I want you to pray. Hmm. I want you to believe. I want you to have faith. It requires faith to be a God pleaser like Abraham. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Genesis, says that Abraham believed God and it was accounted for righteousness for Abraham. But he believed because he had faith. That's why they say that Abraham, he's the father of our faith. And I know you have faith. Mm. It's just been covered. Sometimes when we go through disappointments, our faith gets covered, covered up with disappointments, with uh, no results. And in the meantime, God is working. He's working in you. And sometimes we can't see God working because we're so concerned with our problem. And then God says, keep your eyes on me. Mm. So I want to encourage you today. Mm. 
Keep your eyes, your faith on God. Let me read this, and then we'll get Pastor Daniel's input. Amen. Verse 19, Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. I love that scripture. That helped me as I began my journey back with God 30 years ago. Because I too was hurt in church. I was hurt by a, uh, an authority figure in church. And I know that, that God still had a plan. God had a purpose for my life. And that it was going to take faith to come back. Because I was covered with shame. And I lost my hope. But I want to tell you, God believes in you. Because he made you in his image. That's right. To me, that's amazing. Just to believe that God made you in his image. That, that's how much God tells me that he believes in you. He believes in me. Now, Pastor Daniel, give us a bit of what your thoughts are about this scripture about faith. Amen. Well, you got me all fired up about faith. We all have faith. Amen. We've all been given a portion of faith to do something with that faith. And let me tell you something. What we do with that faith. First of all, faith got us saved. Believing and confessing in Christ to forgive us of our sins. Faith got us saved. And faith can keep us saved. Faith in God. Faith in Christ. You know, and we can't even brag about that it was our faith that got us saved because the portion of faith you got was given to you by God in the first place. God gets the glory no matter which way we go with this. You know, the Bible also tells us that when the Father comes back, will he find faith? Will he? That's a question you want to ask yourself. That's a question that shouldn't sit lightly with you. I want God to find faith. And maybe, like Pastor Peter was saying, you're going through a trial or tribulation, you're going through something, and yes, it's going to require hope when you feel like there is no hope. There was a story, there's an incident where Jesus was ministering to the masses. It's in Matthew 7, you can read it. He, 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 he's so tired and worn out from ministering, he says, you know what? He takes a couple of his disciples. He's like, let's get in this boat. We're going to get to the other side of this lake. And he gets in this boat, and he just falls asleep. He is worn out. It's so awesome that we get a description of mm -hmm. who God is as God, fully God and fully man, that he can share and relate with us. So he's so tired, he passes out. He had already promised they were going to get to the other side. Next thing you know, this wave gets crazy. The disciples begin to just freak out and they're so afraid. Fear struck them. Now, why is that an issue when the Bible said in the middle of this storm, fear struck them? Because the, the opposite of fear is love. Or the opposite of love is fear. Mm -hmm. Because God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen. The opposite of love isn't courage. The Bible says it's fear. So when they were fearing, they weren't loving. And they were denying Christ. He was in the boat with them. It didn't feel like it. They thought they were going to die. They thought Jesus was going to just let the waves destroy them. Jesus woke up. And Jesus looked at them and said, Ye of little faith. And he calmed the storm. And you went back to sleep. Maybe you're in a storm. Maybe things are getting so crazy and wild in your life and you don't feel like you feel the presence of God. Maybe you feel like Jesus is asleep. Maybe you don't feel his presence the way you used to. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Jesus hasn't left you. Jesus hasn't gone. It may feel like he's asleep in the boat, just like with the disciples they felt like he didn't care. They felt like he just didn't.
didn't want to help them out and calm the storm. Sometimes we have to go through the storm, the trials to test our faith. If you have faith, it will get tested because trials create perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Perseverance creates faith. Amen. Amen. And God used that to stretch them. Ye of little faith. I don't want to be ye of little faith. I want to be one that loves God. I want to be one that God could look back and come back and say, I found faith. Is he going to find faith in you, in your church, in your group, in your fellowship, in your Bible study? Will he find faith in your home? Will he find faith in your heart? He hasn't left you. Keep the virtue of faith in Christ and what he does. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I believe that there's many of you out there today that are watching this that you gave up because people didn't believe in you. You gave up because people judged you. But that was not God. God believes in you and God saved you. And God has his plan and it's perfect for your life. But today the Lord just telling me that it wasn't, it's not by mm. coincidence why you turn on the TV and you begin to hear this message. Mm. Well, God says he still wants to use you. Mm. God says that he's still going to use you to perform miracles. But he's getting your heart right. Amen. Because God always deals with our hearts. And God wants you to forgive those who hurt you. God wants you to forgive those who did not believe in you or did not trust you. But this today, the Lord says, it's a new day for you to believe again, to have faith in God. And that's why I tell people it's important that you become a disciple of Christ because it's God who separates us for himself. And God has done that to you. He's separating you so he can work in you mm. and he can build in you. You know, the Bible says that we are the clay and God is the potter and that he's making us and mm. he's molding us and he's shaping us. So you can't throw away your faith mm. because faith without works is dead. And I just want to pray for you. I know that this is hitting you in your heart and I could see in the, the spirit of the Lord that some of you are even weeping right now in your home. But this is God telling you he loves you and he saved you for your generation because you're too important to throw in the towel and give up on God because God will never give up on you. So I believe there's men and young women that I'm talking to on TV right now. And I'm going to pray for you. Because it's God who saved you through all those times. Of maybe you should have been dead already. But God saved you because he's not done with you. And God's raising you up. But, you know, the Bible says above all things, we're supposed to guard our hearts. So you got to know the word of God. Amen. You can't be like I used to be a young man and thought I was ready and, and conquer the world for God. Mm. I made a mistake. But I had to learn. Mm. And I'm here to tell you today that get in the word and, and become a disciple for Christ. Because that's the only way how we're going to make it. And it doesn't matter who believes in you. It matters that God believes in you. And that you believe in him. Because it's about a personal relationship with Jesus. Because your friends will come. And they're not really your friends. Because they're trying to drag you away from God. Hmm. You need to get rid Amen. of those kind of friends. Cut them loose. Because God will bring a group of people to help support you. That's right. And believe in you. Because it's the anointing of God. When we become saved, born again, it's his anointing, the mm. Bible says, that breaks every yoke. That's right. Every bondage of the enemy that tries to set us up to fall, God will break it. That's right. Because he loves you so much. 
He literally died for you. He died for me so that we would live out our purpose for mm -hmm. him. Amen. So you got faith and I got faith, but today we're going to extend our faith together so you can rise up. The Bible talks about God turning our ashes into beauty. So I speak that over you. I prophesy mm -hmm. that over you. Yes. God's turning your ashes into beauty. So, Father, I pray for these today that are watching right now that you'd give your heart back to God and your life because God knows the measure of faith that you have. Jesus mm -hmm. talked about it. He says, if you only have the faith the size of a mustard seed, that's all you need. And he says, you can move mountains. So, brothers and sisters, I believe in today, God's moving mountains so you can rise up from ashes to beauty and fulfill your purpose and your destiny for God. That's right. So, Father, I thank you. And I pray divine appointments for you. Mm. I pray that God shows up big in your family and in your ministry, that God would follow you with signs and wonders because that's his promise and that your faith would begin to arise mm. and be great like Abraham, yes. the father of our faith. I pray for your faith to rise up and believe Amen. that God is for you, who can be against you. So Lord, I thank you. Even for you that need a miracle in healing, I hear the Lord says about heart issues, lungs, God says he's the great physician, mm. and God's going to give you a miracle. Even you that are crippled in bed today, God says rise up because your faith has made you well mm. in Jesus' name. And when you get your miracle, you call this TV station because we want to know about your miracle. Mm. We want to hear about your faith, how God turned it around for his honor and for his glory That's right. in Jesus' name. Amen.